into MicroStation V8 iSelect Series 3, and then looking at the display properties and then annotating that land XML file. To begin, we're going to go to our task menu and go to terrain model. And then from the terrain model, the first icon is to import a land XML terrain model. So I can go out and locate a land XML file that I'm going to be using to import into this design file. I'm going to hit open. And then as far as the import format, I'm just going to bring it in with no element template and hit import. What this is doing is taking the data and then importing it into MicroStation so that I can see that land XML file. So now this is actually existing or being stored in the DGN file. As far as the properties go for the terrain model, I can use my element information dialog box to manage all of this. So you can see here I selected the terrain model and it comes up as a new element. It's called a terrain element. And if I expand this out you can see the different features that I can display out of this uh, terrain. By default the triangles are turned on so if I select triangles I could change the color of the triangles if I wanted to and also the level just by going down to element information and perhaps picking green I can switch the triangle color to green. And as far as the display of these um, calculated features go, I can turn those on and off as well. So for example, if I want to go to my triangles and then turn those off, and then maybe I want to take a look at the contour, so I'll turn the contours on, and it'll display the contour features for me. So now the contour features, I can actually dig in a little bit deeper and have better control. Right now you can see that the major interval is set to 10 and the minor interval is set to 1. I want to set that to 5 to 1 and as soon as I do that the screen updated with the new information or new display of that terrain. And if I dig even a little bit deeper then I can also come in here and change the color, weight, and uh, line style for each one of these contours. I'm going to go back and just turn off contours temporarily and show you the rest of these. Uh, for example, the flow arrows. So if I turn that on, dynamically you can see that the terrain model is updated and it shows me just the flow arrows where everything is going in the site. What's nice to also have is the low points. So I can turn the low points on and the high points on and then I can update the symbology so that we can see it a little bit better. Uh, for the low points, I'm going to bump the weight up to 10 because these are just active points. And I will make the uh, color for the low points um, blue. And the high points, I will make red with a weight of 10. So now I can easily see the flow arrows, the low points, and the high points when I'm looking at my existing surface here. Now, if I want to go back to my contours and then annotate those contours, I can go back to calculated features and just turn off again the flow arrows, the low points, and the high points. Go back to my contours and turn those on. And if I take a look at the contours, I still have that 1 to 5 ratio that I was looking for. And I'm going to go back to my tasks now and the next icon over is labeled terrain contours and when I select that in the tool settings window here I need to select one of the contours so it knows which surface that I'm going to be working with or which terrain I'll be working with and I did create a few um, dimension styles here so that when I'm working with these um, text elements you're actually placing text in the design file displays correctly so the dimension style I have here set as contours so what it will allow me to do then is go into the design file and draw a line and then as I place that line it's placing the text elements with the correct elevation in the design file for me. And you can see here I've got the annotation mode set to all contours. I could just switch this on the fly and do majors only so it'll just grab the major contours. So you've got those options there. So again place it all contours and then if I need to go a little bit to a different spot on the drawing and label a few more. So you can go through your drawing and label contours wherever you feel like you need to. Now the next thing I want to show you then is the sp label terrain spots. Again with label terrain spots you need to identify a terrain and once that terrain is selected again I've set up custom uh, textiles for using these and dimension styles.
so that things display correctly in MicroStation. And as soon as I move my cursor to the screen, you can see as I dynamically move my cursor here, the elevations update. So it's actually reading the elevations from the terrain model. Now if I go to my uh, references here and just turn on my base map, I've got some key points at this uh, bridge that I want to grab. So with those key points I can actually go then and snap to the XY location but I'm pulling the elevation from the terrain model. So then I can just pull these elevations, these spots, right off the terrain model. And once that's labeled then again they're just the MicroStation elements that you're used to in MicroStation. This concludes our tip importing a land XML file into MicroStation Select Series 3 and then annotating the contours and spot elevations. For more tips and tricks, please visit our website envisioncad.com. Thanks for watching.